Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates. This year also marks the 50 years anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic relations between China and Nigeria. China and Nigeria have enjoyed a strong development on the basis of mutual respect, mutual trust, mutual support over the past 50 years. Both sides cherish the friendship, respect each other's core interests and major concerns, and uphold the principle of non-interference in internal affairs. This is not only Chinese foreign policy, this is down in the UN Charter. Non-interference, the feeling sometimes the big power, smaller country, big countries, the interference of others, internal affairs really could create more chaos, the pandemonium. So this is Chinese non-interfering policy. I think that you have know something about China. So we think that non-interfering policy is very, very important for all sovereign countries. The mutually beneficial China, Niger economic and trade relations have enjoyed a robust development. The skill and the areas of cooperation continually expand. And the modes of cooperation have been diversified. Projects like Abuja Kaduna Railway, Algong Guangdong Free Trade Zone, Currency Swap, Satellite Launching, and Joint Marine Scientific Exploration are the first of its kind in Africa. This is done by my predecessor. I just mentioned the, the projects that we are taking the lead of the whole Africa continent. This year, His Excellency Mr. Wang Yi, State Councilor, Foreign Minister of China, paid a very successful visit to Nigeria in the face of challenges posed by the pandemic. He had an audience with His Excellency President Buhari and held talks with His Excellency Foreign Minister Oniyama. The two sides summed up the successful experience of the development of bilateral relations in the past 50 years and jointly formulated a blueprint for the future. Several days ago, I went to Lagos and witnessed the completion of Lagos Ibadan Standard Gauge Railway. I saw the people besides the railway. They are celebrating this is Nigeria's railway. We are taking the lead in the African continent. I'm very moved. I say the, the people are celebrating, are shouting, oh, railway. I, so the 157 lines at the first modern, modern double track standard gauge railway in West Africa was built by Chinese leading company, CECC. Really, the workers are still working there. Even we meet a insecurity situation, the company is committed to implement, to perform their duty. So they are intended to be the flow of goods and the people and to from Africa's large city and Nigeria's inland territory. Ladies, I'd like to report to you that less than three months, more than two and a half months, what I have done here in Nigeria. I'm the 14th Chinese ambassador to Nigeria. When I came to Abuja two and a half months ago, there is always a question in my mind. That is how to deepen, strengthen the China-Nigeria relations. How to build on the achievements of our two countries 
in the past 50 years. Recently, I came out with an idea and gradually developed into a strategy. I call it 5 GIST. Nigeria, China, GDP strategy. 5 GIST. GIST is the main meaning of idea of this strategy. I try to use words GDP, everybody know the gross domestic product. But I want to use other meaning, gross development and progress. The 5G here, the 5G means five goals. They are political support. We have to support each other. We have our difficulty. We believe that also in your side, you have your issue of difficulty. How can the two countries support each other's political support and the political trust? The second goal is the economic cooperation, military collaboration, and international coordination, and the people to people bond. So we have set a specific goal for the two countries in the coming 50 years. How can we make this goal specific, measurable, and tenable, realistic, and time-bound? So five I are five words whose initial is I. They are infrastructure. This is the bottleneck, not only for Nigeria, for every nation, including China. But we believe that infrastructure, not only the foundation, for the nation, that with the foundation also for the development of progress. So ICT is very simple information communication technology. The third I industry, the fourth investment and import export. I believe that we need a value added industry. This is the Nigerian people's dream. How can we catch up the fourth industrial revolution. We missed China, missed one first and second, but we catch up the pace of the international community about the third industrial revolution. So we believe we need industrial value add industry, we need investment, foreign direct investment. This is a Chinese lesson since the year 1979, we opened the door to welcome the investors from developed countries and developing countries. So if you go to China, you will see a lot of joint ventures. This is not only about a job, but about the income, about the, 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 the technology, really create more opportunity to learn from the international countries, developing countries. So investment here is very important. The last idea is about import and export. How could, can we produce more? and export more. The S also is very important. It's, it's, a, it's a, the security, structure, speed, synergy, and supervision. So we believe this is a, the in, in needed condition for the implementation of the strategy. I just mentioned we are working on prioritized areas about 5i, but we need the conditions to implement this strategy. <clears throat> the five T are thoughts, talents, treasure, technology, and tradition, which are the needed guarantees for the success of the strategy. It is my hope that through this holistic, systematic, and complete way of thinking and approach of performing BRI symphony by the China, Nigeria, or Nigeria, China orchestra to the, make the China Nigeria strategic partnership to a higher level. I also encourage you to add your input to this strategy when you make your remarks later. China and Nigeria are born brothers. 
the broadly South-South cooperation between China and Nigeria is equal-footed and mutually beneficial. We firmly support Nigeria in, in pursuing a development path that suits Nigeria's national conditions. We have every <coughs> confidence that under the leadership of President Buhari, Nigeria will achieve even greater success in its national development. We stand ready to work with Nigeria to enhance mutual trust, jointly pursue belt and road cooperation in great synergy with Nigeria's national development, effectively implement the outcome of FOCAC, Beijing summit, and elevate the strategic shape between China and Nigeria to a new level. Dear friends, today we together congratulate the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China and wish the CPC be greater and China Nigeria relations closer in the future. In the end, in my closing words, I welcome you all to have your fund opportunity. This is an opportunity to deepen our resolve to ensure that Nigerians experience what political parties are, so, are supposed to be, meaning that political parties are supposed to be agents of development, delivery of the dividends of democracy. What I gathered from what the, the ambassador has said is that people matter. How we impact the people matter in ensuring that you have stability, of the government and also the sustainability of the party itself in the hearts of the people. Uh, he underscored the importance of consensus building by most especially the party in government. He also underscores the issue of discipline, meaning that the party in government must be disciplined by exhibiting zero tolerance for corruption. Uh, today, most of the problems that we are having in this country is a result of bad governance. If we had had good governance in Nigeria as the ambassador has explained to us about the CPC. I believe that particularly the issue of insecurity, which is as a result of corruption, and I believe to a very large extent, China, as a very strong ally of Nigeria, has a lot of role, very important role to play in ensuring that Nigeria succeed as a government. Yes, I, I also subscribe to the idea of non-interference in the domestic affairs of your host you know, uh, countries. But it's like if I have a child that is not behaving himself well, and it is me that is always supporting this child with his needs. And I just turn a blind eye. I say, well, I don't want to interfere with his affairs. What am I doing? I'm actually destroying that child. I must develop ways by which, even if I don't want to say it in the public, there must be ways by which I can talk to this child and hold into the standards which I believe will save not only the child, but even the future of the country. For example, Nigeria and China been a very benevolent friend of Nigeria by 
the developmental programs that you have excluded, especially the railways, you know, that we have had. We know the importance of railways in every developing economy like Nigeria. We know what you have done when this pandemic came, you know, the, the friendship you extended to us. So, which means you really love the people of this country. But I think there is a need for China to hold the government to the standards which you are using in your country to run your affairs so that going forward, all these developments, all these investments will not come to naught. Because if you do not have a government that is disciplined, that, that uh, demonstrates zero tolerance for corruption, that is engaged in good governance in all its ramifications, believe you me, all this investment, all these kind extent, uh, things that you are doing for Nigeria, and also for other African countries, believe you me, to come to naught. Because what you will have is a situation where you will have people, instead of loving you as the donor or the giver or the helper of, of the people, they will perhaps you know, begin to hate you because they will not see the difference between you and who they now see as their oppressors. So I think China has to do a little bit more by finding ways by which you can reach out to your host governments, especially in Africa. Africa needs you, no doubt about that, because we'll share a lot in common. If we look at your history, we we'll look at the history of Africa, we know what poverty means. And I think you have things that you can do, not only the bread and butter issues, we are talking about the, 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 the governance and that and the sensibility, how people we have in government are treating our people. They don't demonstrate love for the people. They don't demonstrate that they love their country. They don't demonstrate that they are proud of their country. They don't demonstrate that people matter. And all the things you have told us is that you are proud of your country, you believe people matter, that you even have multi-party system in China Although CPC is the most dominant party, but you extend, you know, the, the hands of fellow, fellowship to, to other parties. You listen to them. You sit down with them. You discuss. I don't know when last this government in power today sit down with the parties we have in, in Nigeria. It, it, it has never happened. So which means they do not even regard those that are equal, you know, in, 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 in terms of stake, in, in terms of governance, you know, to them. Otherwise, President Buhari should I be inviting other political parties? Come, have dinner with me, or let me even sit down with you. Let me listen to what your ideas are. That's what you say you are doing. And that's what has been responsible for the sustenance of your programs and your, the success of the government in reducing or, in fact, uh, eliminating extreme poverty, as you said. It couldn't have happened unless you have people who are buying into your ideas. And all I have not heard what role China is playing in us summoning this uh, uh, this uh, I mean, this this scorch of insecurity? So China should come and demonstrate that yes, you 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 feel for us. You are not only here for like I said the bread and butter issues. You know you are also here for genuine reasons. Which means how do we govern? How does the political parties? How are they developing? So I thank you very much. Maybe they say my time is up. But it's also important to appeal to you as far as the exigencies of our country is concerned. In as much as you are very much active in the infrastructural development of our country, your presence and your own support to our security agencies to be able to tackle the security challenges of this country is very important. I come from a part of a country where security or insecurity is the most important challenge. Before roads, there, should, there must be life. Before railways, there must be life. Before any infrastructure, people must live in peace. If you can secure your country with this vast landmass and population, it is important that you also help us to achieve that level of peace and stability you are able to achieve. Political parties 
in our own country are basically platforms for which people aspire for political power. We are not guided by any form of ideology or principles. All our parties, you can photocopy the same manifesto and give it to all the parties, it's all the same. But your party, with its Marxist, Leninist, ideological leaning with Chinese characteristic, has proven that on the basis of having a political party, such a vehicle can drive development and progress. Today, China has become an economic world power. 1978 and 1979, we are almost at par with each other. Today, you are the second as far as the order of economic prosperity is concerned. And on the last note, I will appeal to China in as much as your development impact is being felt. Do as much as possible from your own end to verify requests for loans and debts from African nations that have also become a problem. It is important that governments don't leave behind for next generation a pile of debts which they will not be able to pay. We appreciate all the development and the impacts you are making here, but also your aid that has nothing to do with laws is also very much needed here. We need your expertise, we also need your support. And we thank you for all that you have done, realizing and appreciating the uniqueness of our place. It is interesting to see Chinese in our villages being able to assimilate and live in like our people. So the revolutionary spirit of the Communist Party of China, we hope will be transferred here and we'll be able to achieve as much as, much as you have also achieved within a very short time. Thank you very much. I want to emphasize about CPC is it's a party that takes studying its environment, engaging its reality very serious. Um, you don't have to be CPC. African political parties don't have to be CPC before they can take into account their situation the way it is. Like I said, no advisory from Washington from Brussels or even from Beijing can give you a better insight to the condition of your situation than your own engagement with it. So the real definition of CPC is original thinking, not from abstract, not from nowhere, but from their engagement with their reality. So I believe what CPC done, did in China can even be outdone in Africa. If African political parties take serious the challenge of engaging our reality, interrogating our values, and extrapolating policies based on this engagement. So it's possible for us to do not just what CPC has done in China, but even do more than the CPC has done. Now for this rapid development, China paid attention to building capacity, transforming the people. You know, investing in their human capital, that is the most important thing. Believe in the people, because the people unlock the opportunities. Without the people, technology will be useless, technology will be relevant, but the people are the foundation. So let's take our people, invest in their capacity. Let's have our people educated, let's have them healthy. They become transformational agents. If you have pushed for political but last capacity is literally a heap of sand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.